Hi, welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math. Today, my lesson is on dilations, the mathematical change in size. So today, we will identify dilations and we will dilate figures in the coordinate plane. Here's what I'd like you thinking about today as I proceed through the lesson. How can you tell when a dilation is a reduction or an enlargement? So I want you thinking about a dilation because there's two different types of dilations. Let's review some vocabulary before we begin. So this is the fourth video in the playlist. The previous videos covered translations, reflections, and rotations. And this is the fourth transformation and, and the final transformation that I will review in this grade eight playlist. And a transformation describes how a two-dimensional figure moves on a coordinate plane. A transformation is a change in location by sliding, turning, flipping, or by changing size. So today we're gonna to discuss the transformation dilation, which is a figure that changes size, but not shape, and becoming smaller or larger about a fixed point. And we call this fixed point the center of dilation. So a dilated figure increases or decreases by a specific amount, which we refer to as the scale factor. A dilated image is always similar to the original figure. So unlike the previous three transformations that I reviewed in this playlist, those all resulted a congruent image after being transformed. A dilation will not result a congruent image, it results a similar image by a scale factor. So the image, the transformed image, will be proportional to the original. The center of dilation is this fixed point in a plane that all points are expanded or shrunk by a specific factor. You can think of this factor as the scale factor. How many times larger or how many times smaller? The point can be inside or outside of the figure, which I'll show you examples of both of those today. And when we do this in a coordinate plane, typically the center of dilation is the origin. Everything is enlarged or reduced relative to the origin. Reviewing that an image is the figure after its transformation, and we label this using the apostrophe, which we refer to in math as prime. So for example, if I transform triangle ABC, it will transform to triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, noting that the vertices A prime, B prime, and C prime are related to the original figure, but this is the image after the transformation. And reviewing similar, when two figures have the same shape, corresponding angles will be congruent and corresponding sides will be proportional. And again, I'll refer to this in the video further. So let's talk about dilations in your real world because they exist. If you've ever been to an eye doctor or had known anyone who's been to the eye doctor and they say, oh, I had my eyes dilated. That means that the eye doctor, the optometrist has enlarged your pupils in order to think of it as widening them, opening them up. You can see in this image how one person's, the left eye, the pupil, the black, the center is much larger than the one on the right. So typically your eyeballs, your eyes, the pupil is what is on the right and an optometrist will put something in your eye to cause your eye to dilate so that they can examine your pupil. So that's a dilation in the real world. Here's our dilated eye and here is, you can see that we have our center of dilation right here on the right and if you draw lines out, they should fit right in there. So you can see that there's a proportional relationship here because as we have our center of dilation, it's enlarging, this is enlarged. So you could see it would grow, 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 and it could keep going bigger, but it's an eyeball. So it has a limit to how big it can get. So our center of dilation. So now let's talk about dilations in math. This is what an example of a dilation since each letter is getting larger with respect to the center. So if I call this the center of dilation because I'm not in a coordinate plane, I have to pick a center, and I draw lines out, everything should grow within that range. So you can see that these letters have the borders here and they're, you can see it enlarging. 
Now, dilations in math, when we talk about um, geometric figures, two-dimensional figures, we are starting with this blue, and then this green is the image. It's labeled the image. And you can see that this side right here goes from four inches to a two inch in the image. And this side is six inches, and it goes to three. We can see that it's smaller, meaning it's a reduction. And then we can also see that we have a reduction here. This went from six to three. If we divide, we would need to divide by two. Or we're going to talk about multiplying by one half. Six times one half is three. Four times one half is two. So therefore, we can say that this is a dilation that is a reduction by a scale factor of one half. This image is proportionally one half. Each corresponding side is one half of the other. And they're similar figures because we can tell they're rectangles, so corresponding angles are congruent and corresponding sides are proportional because six over three is equivalent to four over two. They both simplify to two. So again, the scale factor is less than one, it's one half, so therefore it says it's a reduction. If the scale factor were greater than one, then it would be an enlargement. And since the image's corresponding sides are proportional, the corresponding angles are congruent, we have similar figures. So here's another example. This is an enlargement. So our green is labeled as the image, and we can look at corresponding sides. Two corresponds to four. You notice two times two is four. So therefore, the other two sides also need to be increased by a factor of two if this is truly a dilation. Two and a half multiplied by two is five. One and a half multiplied by two is three. So therefore, this is an enlargement with a scale factor of two. Since the scale factor two is greater than one, we know it's an enlargement. We can also see that by looking. But we can tell that this is an enlargement and we can assume that these corresponding angles are congruent. All right, your turn. I would like you to pause the video and identify whether or not this orange is an image that is a dilation of the blue figure. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So the answer here is true. I often ask my students to take a ruler and connect the vertices. And I only did um, two of these vertices here and then I just put one through the middle just so that you could kind of get a feel of that this being um, similar and proportional. But if I took a line and went from the center of dilation here and went through this vertice, it would also line up and go through this vertice. Same thing if I went from the center, I could go through with a line through this vertice and this vertice. So if you're on a piece of paper or even if you're on a computer and you have access to drawing tools, you can check to see if they line up. So they are the same shape, they are different size, so we can say that it is definitely true it is a dilation. And just to take it one step further, this dilation, the type of dilation is an enlargement because the image is larger. We don't have enough information here to determine the scale factor. We can only determine that it is truly a dilation that is an enlargement. Try another one. True or false? The orange image is a dilation of the blue figure. Please pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Here, this would be false. If we lined up vertices, we could see that these lines would never intersect and meet at a center of dilation. These are congruent images, not similar. True or false, the orange image is a dilation of the blue figure. Please pause, come back when you're ready. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So here I can tell this wasn't, my slide's not big enough to show you, but you can see that these lines are going to intersect. They're not parallel, so we know that if lines are not parallel, they will eventually intersect. So when I line up, you can just see that these are all going to converge to a point and the blue image, uh, the orange image is definitely a dilation of the blue and it's an enlargement. Your turn. Is this orange image a dilation of the blue figure? Let's see how you did. 
So in this case, we can see that if we line up and connect the vertices, we're going to have parallel lines. They will never intersect. So it's false. So if you remember back from the pre one of the previous videos, if we draw a line of reflection, this is definitely a reflection. So dilations in the coordinate plane. To dilate a figure in the coordinate plane, we're going to multiply each coordinate of each ordered pair by the same scale factor and then graph the image. So here we have triangle ABC and our instructions are to graph the image of the triangle ABC after a dilation with a scale factor of two. So I'm going to multiply, I'm going to identify the ordered pair that represents the vertex A, which is 0, 1. 0, 1 is vertex A. I'm going to multiply each coordinate by our scale factor of 2. So A prime being the image would be 0 times 2 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. The ordered pair for the vertex B is 1, 3. Multiply both of those by 2. 1 times 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So B prime, the vertex B prime for the image is 2, 6. One more, C is the ordered pair 4, 1. Multiply by 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 1 times 2 is 2. And now I have my C prime. So now I can graph. So here is my original figure. And I've graphed the ordered pairs 0, 2, 2, 6, and 8, 2 for A prime, B prime, C prime. We're going to check it. Remember, in an, the coordinate plane, our origin is our center of dilation. So I start here and draw lines to connect the vertices. And we can see that they all line up. So if it wasn't, if I had graphed wrong, then when I pass through this vertex C, I wouldn't pass through C prime. So you can notice when I start at the origin and I go to B, I also pass through B prime. And the same with A. I draw a line that goes to A and it passes through A prime. So that's your check to see if you've figured out all of the vertices correctly. So now I can say that this is an enlargement since the scale factor is greater than one. Your turn. I would like you to graph the dilation of this rectangle ABCD using a scale factor of three and identify the type of dilation. If you don't have access to graph paper, just write down what the A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime vertices would be and what type of dilation. Good luck. Let's see how you did. So first I'm going to identify that I'm using a scale factor of three and I'm going to start with my vertice A and I can identify that A has an ordered pair of negative one, one. So negative one, one times three would be negative three, three. Moving on to B, B is two, one multiplied by three would be 6, 3. Vertice C is the ordered pair 2, 3. Multiply this by 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 left, D, which is negative 1, 3. Multiply by 3 gives me negative 3, 9. So I'm going to graph this rectangle. So now here's my original figure. Here's my image. Everything's labeled vertices A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. And I'm going to check. I'm going to use my origin as my center of dilation. I'm going to draw a line through B. And if it works, it should go through B prime. And it does. A goes through A prime. Start at the center, the origin. Go through the vertex D. And it goes through D prime. Origin through C. And it also the line will pass through C prime. So I know I've graphed it correctly. And now I can identify that the type of dilation is an enlargement. And I know this because, well, visually I can see it's larger, but I also know because my scale factor is greater than one. Just to note that you will never have a scale factor of one because that would be the exact image. So that doesn't make any sense. If you multiply everything by one, it's not enlarging or reducing in size. There's, there would be no change, so there would be no transformation. Here's another one for you. I would like you to graph the dilation of triangle ABC, which I have graphed here for you, and I want you to use a scale factor of one half. Then I would like you to identify what type of dilation it is. Again, if you don't have graph paper, just write down the ordered pairs for A prime, B prime, C prime, and the type of dilation. Good luck. 
Welcome back. Let's go over this. So I'm going to start by identifying that my scale factor is given to me as one half. So I'm going to identify the ordered pair for the vertex A, which is negative 4, negative 4. Multiply each of those by 1 half. Negative 4 times 1 half is negative 2. 4 times 1 half is 2. B prime is going to be after I multiply the vertex B of negative 2, 4 by 1 half. Negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1. 4 times 1 half is 2. And 1 left. I have vertice C which is six, negative six. Six times one half is three, negative six times one half is negative three. Graph my image and check, using my center of dilation as my origin, go through A and notice that as I line up the origin in A, it does pass through A prime, origin and vertex B, and when I draw my line, it passes through B prime, origin, and C, and you notice it passed through C prime. So this image ended up being inside of my original figure, which will happen. And I can identify that this is a this image is a reduction since our scale factor is less than one. And we can also visually see that it's smaller. Your turn. I would like you now, you have the original image, A, B, C, D. I know that this is the dilated image because it's smaller and it's A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. So remember, you can identify what the original figure is because it's just A. And I know that this is the vertice A prime, so that's the image. We label the image with the prime. So I'd like you to pause and try to identify the type of dilation and what would its scale factor be. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So there's a couple of things, strategies that you could have used to identify this. So first, I hope you knew that it was a reduction because it's smaller. But let's go ahead and figure out a few ways to determine the scale factor. So one would be to write down the vertice A, and it was negative 6, 3. Negative 6, 3. Then the vertice of A prime is negative 2, 1. And if I look at that, I can ask myself, what did I do to negative 6 to get negative 2? And what did I do to 3 to get to 1? So you could say divide by 3, which when we're talking about scale factor, we're multiplying. So 3 times 1 third is 1. And remember, dividing by 3 is the same as multiplying by 1 third. Negative 6 times 1 third is negative 2. You could go forth and check B and B prime and C and C prime, and you would still get a factor of 1 third. So the other strategy you could do is because it is a rectangle and we're in a coordinate plane, we could say how many units is side BC. So I can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So the original rectangle, the side BC, has a measure of 6 units in the coordinate plane. And the measure of side B prime C prime has a measure of 2 units in the coordinate plane. 6 times 1 third is 2. So we can see that this figure is proportional. If you want to check another side, you could do side AB is 12 units and side A prime B prime is 4 units. 12 multiplied by 1 third is 4. So I can conclude that this is indeed a dilation and it's a reduction with a scale factor of 1 third. So I hope that helps you understand dilations and how to recognize them and how to use a coordinate plane to create the image of a dilation. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up on this video if you enjoyed it. And don't forget to check out, if you already haven't, translations, reflections, and rotations in this playlist. Have a great day.